Hi guys, I wanted to do a quick video to show you how to edit uh, some tables, uh, sp particularly statistics tables that may not uh, automatically generate the statistics you're looking for. So for example, in SPSS, it doesn't automatically produce the variation ratio, nor does it produce um, the interquartile range directly. Moreover, when we use ordinal variables, a lot of times when SPSS produces the statistics, the category labels are the numeric values of the categories rather than the labels of the categories. So let me show you what I mean here. So what I have open here is the 2012 national election study. And I'm going to open up a variable. So analyze, descriptive statistics, frequencies. And I'm going to run a frequencies on this epic underscore cares uh, TD variable, which is an efficacy variable. And I'll show you what happens here. Oops. Those statistics. Let me run it again for you guys. So I'm, I'm going to run uh, a frequency table for an efficacy variable. I'll show you here. And it's ethic underscore cares TD, which is a uh, you know sort of the, the belief that uh, public officials listen to people. I'll show you what it looks like in a second. Um, and I'm going to add some statistics. And you see that I've, I've got some stuff already checked. I've got quartiles. I've got median, mode, sum. I don't have sum checked. I've got minimum, maximum range. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run some statistics intentionally uh, that I'm not going to use. So I'm not going to use the minimum and the maximum because I'm going to need to create variables for the interquartile range and for the variation ratio. So I'm going to use these as place markers. Let me show you how this works. All right, gonna hit continue and okay. So here's our table, and you can see that when it when it's done here, rather than having the category labels, uh, it has the uh, the the numerical value. So for example, you can see here that our mode is two, our median is two, right? And those are both the agree somewhat category. All right. We have a maximum of five, which is disagree strongly. But we want in this table, we want it to produce. The actual correct values. So I think to, to start off with here, we're looking at the, the raw table, which includes all the missing values. Let's clean up this table a little bit first. So it'll make it maybe easier for us to interpret the statistics. So I'm going to double click on the table. And of course, that brings up our pivot table that allows us to edit things. I'll make it a little bigger here. So you can see them both at the same time. And I think the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this valid box by ungrouping it. All right. And then I'm going to get rid of the rows and columns I don't need. So I don't need the missing system. So almost 50% of our observations were not asked this question. So I'm going to cut those out. And I'm going to cut out this percentage column here. It doesn't sum to 100%. And now I, I'm going to fix my subheaders. X, half, percent. And I'm going to abbreviate cumulative percent. which will end the word wrap. It'll make the table a little bit tighter. And then I'm going to go into each of these things here. Well, maybe I'll just leave these for a moment here. And uh, just so, so that we can take a look at what's going on when we edit the statistics table. So I'm going to pause right. Maybe I'll fix the title. I think the title. Let's clean up this title here. It says public officials don't care what people think. So it's how much someone agrees that public officials don't care what people think. Right, justify this as well. All right, I'm going to leave it like this for now. All right, so now it's a much easier to read table. I'm not done. I still have to put it in ABA formatting. But the reason I stopped here is because these numbers are actually useful to me for the moment. Because when I see that the mode is two and I double click here, right, and I can edit the statistics table, I can change that mode to agree somewhat. Right? And I can see that our median is also two, and that's also agree somewhat. All right. Now, I don't really have any interest in our missing. I'm just going to delete the word valid. All right. So now I have a median and I have a mode. So those are two standard measures of central uh, tendency or central location. Right. Justify those. So you guys can see what I'm doing here. 
Now we have a range of four. The four means that it goes from the minimum of one to a maximum of five. So I'm actually going to put in words that it goes from agree strongly to disagree strongly. as well. Now you see, I don't actually need the minimum and the maximum. I have the range. What I need is the interquartile range and I need the V ratio. IQR, which is the distance from the third quartile to the first quartile, or and you can see that here's my first quartile, the 25th percentile, is two, and that was agree somewhat. And my third quartile is the 75th percentile, and it has a value of three. So neither agree nor disagree. So I'm going to put in words here. It goes from two to three. I'll show you what I mean. So two is agree strong. And three is neither agree nor disagree. All right. Now I don't need this maximum either, but I do need a space for the IQR. I'm going to put an IQR here. Oops, IQ. IQR. And the IQR, of course, is the proportion of observations not falling into the modal category. So a lot of times what some people will use is they'll use a calculator, right? Which I'm going to use. And I'm just going to calculate this as being one minus the frequency of the mode, which is so I'm going to use parentheses, so one minus the parentheses. And our mode was agree somewhat. There were 1140 observations. So frequency of the mode divided by total number of observations, 2957. And I can show you here in the doc cam exactly what my calculation is doing. So 1 minus 1140 divided by 2957. So there's my 1140, there's my 2957, right? I hit enter. And what I get is 0 0.614, right? So I'm going to put in here the IQR 0 0.614. And I'm going to change the number. You can see in the cell format here, the number of decimals, they can increase it to three. All right, and then that cell, I'm going to write justify. I'm going to write justify that one. And now you can see here, look, I have the median and the mode. Those are my appropriate measures of uh, central location. And then I have the range, the interquartile range. Whoops, this is the B ratio, not the IQR, excuse me. And the V ratio. So now these guys here. Are extraneous. All right. Sample size 2957. Excellent. I think with something like this, maybe you could do uh, maybe you give it a nicer table, uh, a table name if you like. Select this guy here, and you can sort of footnote. Mm. All right, and now I'm going to change the format to um, APA style. And I, I've got the APA template on, on my uh, computer here. Give me a second. So I'll put it on my desktop so it's easy to find. All right, 
looks good. Now, this this thing that shows up underneath it here, what I'm going to do to to make it so it doesn't overrun the table, I'm going to stretch the table out here. And actually, I kind of like the way that looks. All right, so I have a decent looking APA formatted statistics table. Now I just need to do the same, finish this guy off here, make this one APA formatted. And first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of these numbers because I think they look silly. The numbers don't in any way affect our ability to interpret what's going on there. All right, so that's looking better. Let's put a footnote here too. Always want to attribute our data to where we get it. Election study. And then lastly, I'm going to use my template here. And there you have it. So you can see that, you know, with, with, with a few relatively quick manipulations, you can, uh, you can, you can make it so that, uh, your, your tables start looking pretty good. And if, if you, you, you doubted what the, this might look like in a Word document, let me show you. I'm just gonna, you know, maybe, maybe to help us visualize a little bit better, I'm just gonna take what we have and I'm gonna throw it into a blank Word document. So over here you can see I've got a blank Word document. I'm gonna copy this one table. I'm gonna copy it as an image. I often like copying things as images because that way when you, uh, are working, you know, with multiple pages and you scroll across a page, you'll get a table that's partially on one page and partially on another. I'm going to go ahead and paste it special. I usually do enhanced meta files. There's my table of statistics and then right before here, I'll put the other table. Copy this image again and then paste as it has meta file. There you have it. So pretty uh pretty nice looking APA formatted uh, uh, tables and you can go ahead and throw those you know directly into a, a paper, research article, whatever, you know, and people will be very satisfied. But I think we would really not understand exactly what's going on. So hopefully that helps you guys, you know, solve some of the, the issues that you might be having with you know how to deal with SPSS might not be producing the exact statistic that you're looking for and uh, you know ways to manipulate that statistics table and get it get it to look nice. All right you guys good luck with your assignments good luck with using SPSS and we'll talk to you soon. Bye bye now.